always use those screws to fit these on. Otherwise you're gonna go through the bottom of the back. Always check. Right, we're back at the van again. A lot of people have messaged me about um, how well this van renovation is coming on. It really is pushing through now. All the other floor eatings in, as you've seen in the videos, I'll link up into the top on the corner. Uh, bathrooms are being carcassed out, and that's what we're on to today. We've got another bathroom. This is the Jack and Jill bathroom, because it's feeding this bedroom here and this bedroom here, so there'll be a door there and a door there. So this will be able to use. It's like an ensuite for each one, but they call it a Jack and Jill bathroom. So what we've got going in here is a bath going there, shower on this wall here, that's why they have, if you notice it, that's why they haven't put any boards on this wall here yet, so we can get the pipe working for the shower. Um, just about to run that round there. There the pipe for the underfloor heating uh, that goes, as you can see, in, in here and all inside there. So we've got a uh, toilet going here, close couple of toilet back to the wall pan there and a unit here. I think it's a unit, I'll have to double check, but the basin's going here. So what we're gonna do is we've got the hot and colds here, gonna run the hot and colds round into the back through the wall to feed the shower. And what we're gonna have here with this bath is, bath's going in here, taps are going at the back here. So what we'll do, come off the taps in plastic and round into this void, just if there's any issue. We can get to them, but because this is Scott the Builder's house, if ever we need to get through, we could go that way. It's not a problem. You know, on some jobs where people want taps put at the back of the baths and, and they don't understand what goes on, if ever, yes, when you fit it, you're going to make sure it's not leaking, but there's always a chance something could happen or the taps could knacker up and you've got to get access to it. Uh, so they're going to go there. We're going to put the pipe work in here, which we're going to be able to get to if ever need be anyway. Waste pipes out along into the source stack. Going to put a four inch in for the base, uh, four inch in for the toilet, waste for the basin. So we're going to get some pipe work in and just basically get this one carcassed out. So we've got the hot and colds in that are going to go behind the bath to feed the shower. So we're going to work out now at what height exactly we want the shower. And because these boards are not on on the back, we can come in here. But what I'm just a little concerned about is where Spark has got that cable there because I think it's going to be roughly about there. But we'll have a measure up and see what's what. And then when the bath goes in, we can bring the tails of the bath round and connect in. I, what I'll probably do is connect it into where the back of the, um, where the pan is. So if ever we need to get to it, we can move the pan out of the way and get to the pipe there. So what I'm going to do is put the legs on the bath, get the height of the bath set. Because this bath's not having a bath panel, we're having it completely tiled in at the front. Um, we, we can sort of put the bath to whatever height we want to do. So I'm going to put the legs on, get the bath in, and just mock up the height and just sort of dry fit it to see where we're going to be. Then I can work out exactly where we're going to put the pipe working for the shower. So what I always say, I think on every video I've done, showing bath fittings is always separate your, your legs, separate your fittings. Now in, usually what happens is where the legs come on baths, they screw the legs to the bath, always use those screws to fit, the, uh, to fit these on. Otherwise you're gonna go through the bottom of the bath. But with this, they weren't screwed onto the bottom of the bath, they were just in this box at the bottom. But it comes with, where's the other one? Six, but it comes with six screws obviously for these holes here and they're marked out in the bath so they're they're the screws we're going to use to fix the buttons on uh, the sort of batten bits batten metal buttons on the bottom of the uh the bath for legs to go on but yeah always use the screws provided never use your own because you will go through the bottom of the bath <laughs> Thank you. 
always check. And then as I said for the legs, we're just going to put them on and um, get them to roughly a height that we're happy with, that Scott's happy with for the bath because, as I say, we're having a tiled front, tiled uh, bath panel on it. But I know what people are going to say about tiled bath panels. What if, what if anything ever happens and you've got to get under it? As I've said before, this is the builder's house, Scott the Builder. Um, it's not going to be a problem. He, know, he knows he knows the uh, pros and cons of it, so it's not an issue at all. So these legs, we've just screwed in legs like this. Got a thread on, on the actual batten, which is quite nice. And then obviously we look to go on the top to lock it off. So we'll get all of these in. So the general rule of thumb for the height of a bath is from the finished floor level to the lip of the edge of the bath is 510 mil. So I've measured that. I've dropped it down a little bit to 500, um, just because it's, it's sort of you can do it to suit really. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to measure off there. So what's that? 70 mil. So we can go around now, set all the legs to 70 mil, and we know it's all going to be level because it's a, a, a completely square bath. Obviously the internals of the bath's got a fall in it. So we'll get it off and into place, level it all through, and then we can just put in where those pipes are going to go. And that's stood in, we can work the height out perfectly. <laughs> so there we go, that is just put into place at the minute, dry, we're going to just put it in, level it all through, because I can see it's out of level a little bit anyway, level it all through and we can work out exactly then where we need to put these shower pipes in. So there we go, that's the bath sort of put into position dry, I've not fixed it in, not bolted in or anything, just to get a rough sort of level. So we're going to put the shower on this line, so we'll find the centre of the bath, centre of that part there, with the middle of the shower, then you'll have 150 centers for the pipes up for the head at the top so this is the back of where that shower is going the stud was coming down here we'll just trim that off in a minute the stud was coming down here falling right on where that was to go to centralize on the bath so we've altered the stud around a little bit what we'll do we'll bring copper out through copper off there through there for the shower valve and then we can get the insulation back into here and then that's that shower it'll be going on there and that's that shower done and we can then get the bath in to position and get that fitted. Right, we've all been here, we've all gone to do something, gone to, I've just gone to fit the bath and we're missing the bath waste and the bath trap. So I'm gonna shoot off over to Plum Base now, grab some bits and... Wow, here's somewhere that we haven't been for a while. Hop and see the boys. No one about. Okay, lights are off. Yeah, I will do. Right, see, speak to you soon. Tara, tara. He's only back. He's back. <laughs> Hello, mate. Here he is, the COVID king. Right, so we've got the bath in position, but while I've been having my break, and Chippy's turned up, Sean the Chippy's turned up, with his shit music, can drowning out my, <laughs> what have we got on Radio 2? Drowning out my classic Radio 2. So you get to a certain age, like I am, and this kid turns up with some shit pumping out of his DeWalt. Uh, right, so, bath's in, bath's in position. What I've done, I've leveled it all up. So what we'll do now, I've marked underneath here and we'll put two, well, three battens along the back just to bear the weight of it when it goes in. Loads of people comment on the way you fit baths. This is the way I do it. It's the way I've always done it. Batten the back of it, put the, um, put the bearers underneath each leg just to spread the weight. So we've got that there and then at the back as well. So what we can do is mark up for the buttons, set the bath out, put the buttons in, drill for the taps, get the taps in, get the waste in, and then what we're going to do is have the tails coming off and poking up to feed into the uh, hot and coals that are around there. So we've got a button on the end there. What I'll do is put two more buttons along there, along that line, and down there, and then the bath, the edge of the bath will sit on that, and it ain't going anywhere. So we'll get them in, get the bath sat down, cut the holes for the taps, so we've got the bath marked up for the taps to go in, seven inch centre, so we'll drill them out, get the taps in, then we can connect onto the bottom because we're going to bring the feeds 
into this stud in here. So that's the taps made into the bath. What we're going to do with this, is, this is the way I do it. People do it other ways. This is the way I'm going to do it. Put 22 to 15 flexes on the bath. Then I'm going to connect in two poly pipes. So when the bath switch around the other way, those two hot and colds will come out the side of the bath into the back of the box in and connect into the hot and cold here. We'll get that spun round, get that into position, get the pipe work tucked around the side and we can get it all in. Sitting on the battens, the treat, so let's switch it around the other way. Get these connected into here first, and then switch it around, put it into position. That's the bath in, fitted, bolted down now. So what we've done, we put these bearers underneath the legs just to spread the weight of the bath across there and at the back. So we've got that here. These are the two hot and coals that are connected around the back. And you can see this is gonna be tiled and uh, boxed out of there and what they're going to do on the front of there as well is bring off a tile off there and then a tile completely tiled front panel on the front of it so what we do now we'll get it silicon around the back so it's in so it's on the battens there so it's not dropping or anything so we're good to go on the bath right so that's the bath in position now what i'm going to do is put a bead of silicon all the way around before the tiling goes on just so it sort of seals it a treat moisture boards are on i know people are going to say should aqua board it or cement board it or whatever. But as I've said all along with this build, it's owned by Scott, who is a builder. This is how he wants it done. Moisture boards are going in. Uh, to be honest, I've never had a problem with moisture boards. As long as the tiling is done right, etc., etc., there's not an issue. So we'll bang a bead of silicon along here, get it all in. And then the same along the top as well, get it all in and double seals it for when the tiles go on. <laughs> nearly got yeah, nearly got Sean. So Sean's been dying to get on camera all day. Come on, give us some lyrics, Sean. Nah, I'm the camera shy. Yeah, he goes all shy now. Look at him. Beat look at that. Look a beast of a man. Beat look the at him. man. Eight o'clock tonight, mate. Karaoke. Karaoke. So there we go. That's that bath in sealed in. All we've got to do now is just connect the waist underneath. You're just going to bring it out of here and poke it into this box in here, and the hot and colds are in there, and you're ready to connect into the pipe work. So that's the shower pipe working for that job. Uh, as you've seen, brought it back in the back of that board, poked it out in the right place, and now the shower can just sit on there after it's been tiled. And the bath, that's the bath in. As you could see from the video, I put a plinth of, you know, a plinth around the outside of the bath for the bath to sit on. So that plinth then takes the weight of the bath. Because there's no water onto that job, and a lot of people say when you put a bath in, you've got to fill it up because it will drop. If you batten the back of it, and you support the legs underneath and it's all tight and put in properly there's no real need to do that if you can do it fine but at that point in the job in this build there's no water on so we can't do that physically can't do it so that batten around the back supports that bath that bath is not going anywhere so that can now be tiled down to and and finished just got to finish the waste off into the stack, which we're going to do when the toilet goes in and the basin goes in and connect the pipe work to it. But just so I'd show you that with the battening around the bath, it's just a nice little, is it a little bit of a hack? Everyone does it, but a lot of the baths now just come with little owl brackets or the little, um, they're sort of like, look at me trying to explain it, on a funny, funny angle. You know what I mean. Or it comes with them or the owl brackets the owl brackets aren't great so for the sake of it just put a bat batten around the back of it sit the bath on top of it a it makes it perfectly level b it's not going anywhere so i hope you enjoyed that little video uh hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i shall catch you on the next one yeah.